Hi there, welcome once again to Dukescopy TV. I'm Ben Jones. It's the final day of the trading week, so alongside me for the weekly wrap up is Francois Stoffberg. So, Francois, I'd like to begin by looking at the US non manufacturing PMI that was released earlier this week. It stayed above 50 but dropped slightly to 57.1. Is this still a positive figure for the US? Definitely so. Um, it was actually reported 16 non-manufacturing industries reported growth in October, commending favorable business conditions. However, the overall non-manufacturing PMA fell below expectations to 57.1. Although a value above 50 points towards expansion, there seems to be a continuous leveling off from strong growth in the preceding months. This is prominent in service sectors activity in the U.S., which during October grew at the slowest rate in four months, dampening some growth optimism. In a similar fashion, manufacturing PMI edged lower from 57.5 to 55.9 in October. I believe it is still signaling positive. The average reading between 2012 and 2014 was 54.17 and reached an all-time high of 57.9 in August. Output and new business growth both moderated, job creation remained resilient, while input cost inflation was the weakest since April. Some fuel was brought on by lower global commodity prices. All in all, I think this week economic news in the U.S. took a back row seat to elections when Americans voted to hand control of the Senate to the Republicans and the markets approved. Now moving on to the euro area, retail sales fell this week to 0.6%, the lowest figure in four months. Can you discuss the effect this will have and also discuss some of the highlights from this week's press conference? Um, Yes, Eurostat, the European Union Statistics Office, reported that retail sales in the 18 countries sharing the euro area fell 1.3% month-on-month in September um, for a 0.6% year-on-year rise. Retail sales is commonly used for a proxy um, of household demand and underlines the European Commission's forecast that the Eurozone economy will stagnate quarter on quarter in the July to September period after expanding 0.3% in the first and 0.1% in the second. The month-on-month decrease was mainly driven by a 2.2% fall in the non-food sector. The highest increases in retail trade, however, came from Malta 1% and Luxembourg 0.9%, whilst retail sales in Germany and Portugal decreased 3.2% and 2.5% respectively. Uh, During this week's press conference, the European Central Bank's President Mario Draghi commented that the bank voted unanimously in favour of unconventional stimulus if the current measures are insufficient in reaching targeted balances, balance sheet size and if the inflation outlook worsened, um, which gave markets a lift but the euro a two-year low. Um, Mark Wall, economist at the Deutsche Bank, repeated their belief that QE would happen in the first quarter of 2015 and include government bonds. In our view, the ECB will push to delay QE to the second quarter. And finally, can you analyse for us the US data that's just been released? Um, Well, it definitely means something good. Uh, The unemployment rate fell to 5.8% during October, um, below market consensus of 5.9%, when the economy added 240,000 more jobs. At 5.8%, it's the lowest rate since July of 2008. Um, Fewer people applied for U.S. unemployment benefits in this week, leading to the release of the unemployment data. This was a good indication that the job market should have continued to improve. Uh, The less volatile four-week average claims declined to 279,000, the lowest level in more than 14 years. Uh, Job applications are a proxy for layoffs and have fallen 18.5% in the past year, suggesting some employment confidence by business keen to employ more labor. Another good proxy for unemployment is the insured rate. This rate is based on the share of the labor force that is eligible to receive unemployment insurance, which has dropped 1.8% in October. It dropped to 1.8% in October. These trends point to steady improvement in the overall employment environment in the U.S. Francois, thank you once again for joining us today. That's all for this edition. Make sure you join us next week for plenty more updates and exclusive interviews. Bye for now.